Welcome to the Bayside Message of the Week. If you have a story on how God is working in your life, send us an email to stories at baysidechurch.com.au. If you're in the Melbourne area, why not come join us at our Cheltenham or Frankston campus and see how church has changed. Check it out. So I want to finish this evening with you the uh, series, Moses More Than a Movie. And I hope you've enjoyed this series and uh, got a lot out of it. Uh, Parts one to five are already online, audio and video. If you're taking notes, you'll find notes on the website as well as on the YouVersion Bible app. But if you're taking notes, the title of this message is All Who Are Willing, dot, 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 because there's more. All Who Are Willing. And I'd like you to go with me in your Bibles, if you would please, to Exodus 35. <laughs> Exodus 35. Christy sends her love, by the way. She is in the air right now on her way home. We were chatting on the phone last night and uh, she was in tears, as you can imagine. Um, the news is not looking good for the boys. It's very likely that without a miracle, they will be executed sometime in the next month. And so she, was saying, she said, I want to be home with my family, but I'm feeling, feeling very torn right now, uh, as you can understand. So just pray for her if you would. It'd be great. Exodus 35, and uh, we're going to read it from verse 4. Okay, so everyone found that? Exodus 35 and verse 4, Moses said to the whole Israelite community, this is what the Lord has commanded, from what you have. And that, those three little words are so important um, in regard to our giving particularly, but it's not, fine, just, not just financial giving, but all of our giving in life. It's always from what we have. If you have a read of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9, uh, the people of God were always encouraged to give out of what they had. All right, and so I think that's really important. I wouldn't want anyone here um, to borrow money to give. I've, I've, I've seen that happen uh, in churches, you know, for building projects and all of that sort of thing, where people in the congregation have actually gone into debt, borrowed money in order to give to the work of God. Our giving should always be out of what we have. Really important truth. So from what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering. And then it lists a number of things that they could give in this particular offering. And I'd say right up front, some of these things I'd be very happy for you to give in any offering at Bayside. Uh, but there would be certain other things here that I'd prefer that you didn't give. Let's read the list. Gold, silver, and bronze. No problem with any of those. Blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen. That's okay. Goat hair, not a lot of use for that. Although you could always weave it into a wig for me, I suppose. Goat hair wig. Kidding. <laughs> Ram skins dyed red and hides of sea cows. And I was looking at this and I think, what on earth would they want hides of sea cows? Sea cows, incidentally, are now an extinct animal. They have been, I think, for the last 100 or 200 years. They were hunted to extinction. Uh, they were used for food, uh, and they were used for their skins. The skins, the hides of the sea cows were ended up, because all of these things here are, are being given for the construction of the tabernacle, which was their temporary worship place. That they, it was like this portable worship place that they would take through the desert with them. And, and I was reading about the hides of skin cows this afternoon. Uh, which is what you do on a pleasant Saturday afternoon, you know, things pop into your mind and go, wow, let's find out about hides of sea cows. And so I did. And apparently they were very thick and they were a little bit like the bark of an oak tree. That was how, how tough they were. And so these things were to cover the tabernacle. And they were quite prolific, I believe, in the Red Sea area. And so they fished for these things and they caught them and skinned them and they carried the hides of sea cows around. The closest thing we have these days to a sea cow is a dugong or a manatee. Uh, and uh, before I sound too much uh, more like, um, what's the guy who does all the documentaries? Yeah, David Attenborough. Before I spend too much more time talking like David Attenborough, let us continue. <laughs> the other things that they were giving, and I don't want any of this either, is acacia wood because it's very heavy and it's hard for the helps teams to collect. 
Olive oil for light and spices for anointing oil and fragrant incense make a terrible mess of coins and notes. So none of that in the offering bucket either, but please feel free to put onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod or breastplate. <laughs> Anytime. Verse 10, all who are skilled among you are to come and make everything the Lord has commanded. Now, let's go down to verse 20. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence, and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting, for all its service and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, came. Verse 25, every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought, uh, brought what she had spun, blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen. And all the women who were willing and had the skill spun the goat hair. The leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastplate. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. Then Moses said to the Israelites, see, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. And he has given both him and Aholiab, son of Ahesimach, the tribe of Dan. Thank goodness for Dan. <laughs> the ability to teach others. He has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, embroiderers in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, and weavers. All of them skilled workers and designers. Chapter 36, verse 1. So Bezalel, Aholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord had commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Aholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. There's two wonderful truths that pop up all the way through what we've just read. All who are willing and all who are skilled. And they're the two things I want to spend a few minutes with you looking at tonight. Let's look at all who are willing, first of all. Look at those statements that we've just read. All, uh, everyone who is willing, everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them. Isn't that a wonderful statement? So often it's think it, th we think that it's actually our legs that move us, but our legs only obey, obey what our brain tells them to do. It's actually what goes on on the inside of us that determines whether or not we are moved, either physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Sometimes people are moved. Sometimes they are not, and it all depends on their heart. All who were willing, men and women alike, all the women who were willing, then talks about what the leaders brought. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings. Right there we see that willingness is not prejudicial. Men, women, leaders, everyone who wants to be willing can be willing. Willingness, how wonderful it is, how wonderful it is leading people who are ready, eager, and prepared to do something. One of the things I love about this church community is we have so many eager, willing people. It makes it so much easier to lead. I, I love it. I love it when people are, they just, yes, we can do this as a community of people, and over the almost 23 years that this church has been going, so many eager, willing people have made what you see all around you possible. Thank God for willing people. I read about an amazing, willing person just this week. In fact, a, a young man that I had the privilege of meeting when I was in Indonesia earlier this year, his name is Rico Ricardo. Rico is uh, the man that you might have read about in the newspapers or seen on the news. Uh, he has offered 
to give his life in place of Andrew Chan. Rico has an amazing testimony. Andrew led him to the Lord. Uh, he has had a dramatic conversion. Uh, he was seriously ill and, uh, and he needed an operation. And because of Andrew's um, uh, encouragement of the officials, they finally let him go to a hospital, understanding that the, the doctor inside Korobakan prison is actually trained as a vet, not a doctor. And so Andrew sat with him and, and pleaded on his behalf that Rico would finally be allowed to hospital, and he was, and, uh, and we helped cover some of the medical uh, expenses for him. Uh, it cost 600,000 rupiah, which is $60, and it saved his life. And now Rico is saying, I would rather die in your place. I read it yesterday, and it sounded an awful lot like Jesus to me. What about you? How amazing to be that willing. Praise God for willing people. Otherwise, it's like herding cats. Really, I love that. I love that idiom, you know. It's like how frustrating it is to try and lead and organize people who are uncontrollable or chaotic. And I thank God that that doesn't apply to you. Um, a company, I think it was over in America a, a while ago, put together a commercial based on cat herding, and uh, let's watch it right now, shall we? This man right here is my great-grandfather. He's the first cat herder in our family. Herding cats. Don't let anybody tell you it's easy. Anybody can herd cattle. Holding together 10,000 half-wild short hairs. Well, that's another thing altogether. Being a cat herder is probably about the toughest thing I think I've ever done. I got this one this morning right here. And if you look at his face, it's it just ripped to shreds, you know? You see the movies, you, you hear the stories, it's, I'm living a dream. Not everyone can do what we do. I wouldn't do nothing else. It ain't an easy job, but when you bring a herd into town and you ain't lost a one of them, ain't a feeling like it in the world. EDS, managing the complexities of the digital economy. Isn't that delightful? <laughs> I just love it. I love the guy who goes, oh, I'm living the dream. <laughs> Ain't nothing like the feeling you get when you get into town and you haven't lost a one of them. Yeah. Herding cats. Praise God we don't have to herd cats. Four quick things about those who are willing. Number one, God champions those who have a can-do attitude. All the way through the passage of Scripture that we read this evening, uh, is cheering on those who contributed because they want to. And right there, I think, is, is one of the fundamental truths of, of God's creation of the human race, that when he created people, he created us to choose to be willing or not. Free will. What a risk. <laughs> and, and sometimes in the world today, we see the disasters of that risk. But what was the choice? Making robots? Because that's the option. I love my kids, and one of the things I love at the end of the day is, is walking into the house and hearing the pitter-patter of little feet and, and the screams of delight and, you're home, you're home. You know, that's how Christy greets me every day. <laughs> and, uh, and then the kids will come along as well, you know. It's wonderful. They're not programmed to do it. They, they, they greet me because they love me. You could program your computer when it goes on in the morning, you know. You just open it up and, and it would give you some sort of greeting. You know, good morning, I love you. But, you know, you wouldn't be hugging your computer screen. Oh, I know. I know I love you too, you know. Why? Because it's programmed to do that. How amazing it is. And that's what God has wanted right from the very beginning, a company of people who are willing to love Him because He loves them, willing to serve Him. And God champions those who are willing, who have a can-do attitude. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19 says, If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. If you are a willing person, you will reap great things in your life. Number two, the willing, un, sorry, the unwilling are not mentioned in this passage. 
The unwilling are not mentioned. We read nothing in these verses of those who were not willing, although the text infers that they existed. Because it says over and over again, those who are willing, those who are willing, those who are willing. Now, at the beginning, as I mentioned earlier, it said, out of what you have. So there were obviously people in the community who, were, who had absolutely nothing at all and were not able to participate in that offering. And, and that's not unwillingness, that's uh, an inability. They weren't unwilling, they were unable. But there must have been, by, by the inference all the way through here, a company of people that were not willing to participate. And so, and that's fine. They're not mentioned at all, but they existed. I love what the American poet Robert Frost said about this. He said, the world is full of willing people, some willing to work and the rest willing to let them. <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt put it this way, freedom makes a huge requirement of every human being. With freedom comes responsibility. For the person who is unwilling to grow up, the person who does not want to carry his own weight, this is a frightening prospect. Number three, Moses doesn't try to get the unwilling to be willing. We don't read anything in this part of Scripture where Moses calls make yourself willing seminars, advertising them around the wilderness, happening here this coming Sabbath. We're going to have, are you feeling unwilling? Come to the make yourself willing seminar. We're going to present truth that will make you willing. Register now at the iConnect desk. <laughs> Nothing like that at all. Moses didn't put out a CD set called Nine Ways to Want to Do Something. He just doesn't address the unwilling at all. And I will say the same to anyone here at Bayside Church. If you are unwilling, I will say exactly the same to you that Moses said. Nothing at all. Except one thing. <laughs> if you want to be willing, pray. Just, just pray. Ask God to change your heart. Because sometimes we're unwilling. I find myself like that at times. I'm unwilling to do something. I say, God, I don't know why, like the way my heart is right now. Please change my heart. Pray the prayer that David prayed in Psalm 51 verse 12. He said, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Grant me a willing spirit. What a great prayer. Pray that prayer. Number four. The unwilling still benefit from the willing. Anyone in Israel who was not willing to participate in the building of and the provision for the sanctuary, the worship life of the nation of Israel, they didn't give to it, but they still benefited from it. Isn't that an amazing truth of life? That there are unwilling people in every community that still benefit from the willing. That happens in Australia. We have the majority of people, you know, pay their taxes, do the right thing, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but there are people in our country who don't do the right thing. They try and dodge tax, but they still have all of the benefits of living in Australia as those who do. The same happens here at Bayside Church. Over the years, what you um, have seen and what is developing and, and what has developed uh, in this church community has bec been because of a whole lot of very willing people. And praise God for each and every one of you and, and for those who used to be part of this ch church community and have moved on to different parts of the world or different parts of Melbourne or different parts of Australia. Uh, but they, while they were here, they were willing and they sowed their time, their effort, their abilities, their resources into making this church community everything it is today. And even if you're one of those unwilling people, you are still reaping the benefits. If you're an unwilling person, you're sitting on a chair right now that was bought by a willing person at Bayside uh, almost 15 years ago. Everything that you see, as, as was said earlier, and please don't turn my microphone off, but the very fact that you can hear me right now, the very fact that you, can, that you can see, the very fact that you're enjoying live stream, the very fact that we have a sound system, a TV program, uh, Matt's Place, a forever home for abandoned kids in Johannesburg, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, has all been because people were willing. Right now, you're enjoying this because we have a whole stack of people that aren't even seen right now who are working behind the scenes, like the media guys uh, out in the back production room. Hey, fellas. 
guys behind the cameras, all because they're willing and it enables people to be blessed through worship and the word. And so the unwilling still benefit from the willing. That's all who are willing. Secondly, all who are skilled. In these verses we've read in Exodus, it mentions seven times that statement, all who are skilled among you. God gives skill to those willing to use their abilities. I want to differentiate here between three things. I think it's really important that we understand the difference between these things because God will give skill to those who are willing to use their abilities. I want to differentiate for you between knowledge and ability and skill. Number one is knowledge. Now, knowledge is the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. You can get knowledge by going to school. You can get knowledge by going to university. You can get knowledge by going to a TAFE. You can get knowledge by reading a book. You can get knowledge by listening to podcasts. There are lots and lots of ways that you can get knowledge, but just because you've got knowledge doesn't mean that you also have ability and skill. I remember when I first got out of Bible college, I did three years full-time Bible training and uh, I went to a church, Lighthouse Church, about 20 minutes away from here. That was my first um, uh, paid appointment I- as a church pastor. And I remember saying to the senior pastor, Richard Warner, I said to him, well, Richard, I'm out of Bible college. And Richard said to me, yeah, now we've got to get Bible college out of you. <laughs> and that was a great statement. And I tell you what, there was a lot of truth in that as well. Because so easy to come out of an institution and think, I'm ready. I know it all. And then you start working and then you realize how little you know. And you think about whatever you do in regard to employment. Like you can go and train to be a teacher and then you're standing in front of this class of kids. Ah! And then suddenly it's scary and and, and you develop over the process of time. Knowledge is good, but if all you've got is knowledge, it can actually make you arrogant. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 8.1. It says we, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge makes people arrogant, but love builds them up. I've had some fascinating conversations over the years with Christian men and women who know their Bible back to front, but their hearts have not been gripped by the love and grace of God. And they're, they're arrogant know-alls. That you can't tell them anything. They're not teachable. We, God help us that we, none of us would ever get into that place. Let us all maintain humility of heart. I, I got to tell you, the more I find out in the Word of God, the more I discover, the more I know I don't know. And and I, and I live as I as I grow and mature as a Christian. I'm a lot more comfortable living with mystery and unanswered questions than I was when I was in Bible college in my mid twenties and knew the answer to every question. Now I don't. And I don't pretend to. We had a teacher at school. Isn't it strange how you remember your teacher's names if they were really, really good or really, really bad? You don't remember anyone in the middle. I remember one of my really, really bad teachers. His name was Mr. Bowen. This is back in the days where you could hit children. I'm glad those days are over. He used to come along with his ruler, 12-inch ruler, and he would wrap us over the knuckles with the edge of the ruler. He was a nasty piece of work. He was the most intelligent, well-qualified teacher in our school. He had more degrees than a Melbourne summer. (laughs) And yet he didn't have the ability to communicate his knowledge. I can't remember what I learnt in his class other than keep your hands under the table. That was Mr. Bowen. These two guys we read about in in Exodus, Bezalel and Oholiab, weren't just skilled themselves. They also had the ability to pass on their skill. It says in the Bible they had the ability to teach others. So the knowledge wasn't just stuck in their head. They had this ability to be able to pass that knowledge on to other people. That's a good teacher. Whether you're a teacher of of children, 
or, um, or, or university students or adults or, or a Bible teacher or whatever your work is, if you have a responsibility of overseeing and downloading into other people, that's a wonderful skill to be able to have. Exercise it. That's knowledge. Secondly is abilities. Abilities are the qualities of being able to do something. Now, some of the abilities that we possess are God-given. Uh, some of them are learned abilities, and some of them are genetic abilities. I have inherited some things from my parents. Uh, from my mum, I have inherited the ability to talk and listen. Um, from both of my parents, I, I learned the ability and the love of gardening. But there are some things I didn't inherit from my parents. My dad uh, loves to do artwork. He, he's done some, some beautiful artwork, and he's very, very clever at drawing and all of that sort of thing, like Damien did tonight. I mean, I'm just in awe and wonder. I'm standing on the front row worshiping God, and I'm looking at this going, oh, wow. And I was wondering, because who was at Church Unite? And you remember the, the painting that he did, and then he turned it around, and then suddenly you saw it's Jesus? And I'm standing on the front row going, they look an awful lot like candles, but I wonder what they really are. <laughs> so, if we turn them upside down, would it be Jesus? <laughs> but I can't draw to save my life. The kids laugh at me because Christy is very talented uh, in art, and, uh, and Gigi is absolutely amazing. Um, Paris is learning, and Trinity is showing the signs of, of doing great artwork, and, and I come along. I can't even do stick people in in proportion. I'm absolutely hopeless. The other thing that my dad had was he was an amazing handyman. <laughs> he, he was just amazing. Even today, he's about to turn 85, and in his garage, on the wall, are all his tools, and he's drawn around them, and everything is just absolutely perfect and neat. And, you know, growing up, he, uh, he would always be making stuff. And he'd say, come on, Rob, do you want to help me with this? Like, Not really. So I'd go and try and help with something, and then after a little while, he'd say, why don't you go off and play? Because <laughs> he realized I was not a help, I was a hindrance. A couple of weeks ago, our, our front gate, which is a wooden gate, and, uh, and, and people have been, as they go, and particularly Gigi in the morning when she's been going to school, sorry to embarrass you, sweetheart, but she tends to be running a bit late, she's going to get the bus, and she tends to slam the gate. And over the process of time, one of the nails was coming out further and further and further out. And so I thought, someone's going to snag themselves on that nail. So I went to get my hammer, <laughs> which I have. It's still very shiny. <laughs> and I went and I was like, how hard can this be? So I got my hammer and I lined it up. And I thought, okay, so I'm going to knock this thing in. And I did a few bangs and then the whole thing just bent. So now it's just kind of, it's not sticking out anymore, but it's just bent over. So in the end, I'll like, oh, blow it. Just gave it a jolly good whack, so the whole thing sunk right into the wood. I just can't do handyman stuff. I never inherited that ability. I just don't have it. I wish I was like my dad in that, or, and I wish I was like the guy that you're about to see in this clip, because um, this is absolutely unbelievable. Look at how he knocks in a hammer. Uh, maybe you want to make that your goal for 2015. <laughs> maybe not. So that's knowledge and abilities. Thirdly is skills. Skills are your knowledge and your abilities developed through training, experience, and grace. Think about that. It's a wonderful definition. Your skills are your knowledge, what you know, what you've found out, what you've discovered, and your abilities, whether they are God-given, learned, or genetic. It's your knowledge and skills developed over the process of time through training, through experience, and through grace. Because don't underestimate the grace of God in helping to develop what you have. I shared just a few weeks ago how that when I started off in radio, I wasn't very good, but when I gave my life to Jesus, my skill went through the roof and I ended up 
going from their nighttime announcer to their breakfast announcer in just a few months. The grace of God that comes upon your life, he, he made you. He knows how you work best. And with his presence in your life, you can reach your full potential. Praise God for skill. I heard about an emperor, a powerful emperor who needed a, a skilled person. He needed a new chief samurai. And so he advertised for a chief samurai. And after a year, he only got three people. He got a Japanese samurai, a Chinese samurai, and a Jewish samurai. And he said to them, okay, one by one, I want you to demonstrate to me your skill. And so the Japanese samurai came first, and he opened up a little blo a box, a little wooden box, and a fly flew out. And he got his samurai sword, and he went like this. And when they looked at the ground, the fly had been cut into two equal pieces and was lying and, and on the floor. And the emperor said, well, that's pretty impressive. He said to the Chinese samurai, can you do better than that? And he said, I certainly can. He came along and he, he opened up the box and a fly flew out. And the guy went phew, phew, like this. And then they looked down and there's a fly in four equal pieces on the floor. He said, well, that's amazing. And he looked at the Jewish samurai, samurai and he said, okay, now it's your turn. I hope you can do better than that. And the Jewish samurai came along and he opened his little wooden box and a fly flew out and he went phew, 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 and the breeze went through the, the room, but the fly was... Zzzz. The emperor said, well, that wasn't very good. And the Jewish samurai said, it's pretty hard to circumcise a fly. <laughs> Someone said, that's terrible. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> See, normally I would have bounced that sort of thing off Christy, you know. So I just <laughs> Should I tell this joke and she'd go, not in church? <laughs> but you're glad she's been away, right? Because then you've got to hear that. So. Skills. When you're connected to God, your skills, as I said before, reach their full potential. Listen to those statements again from Scripture. He has filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills. He has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work, all of them skilled workers and designers. Every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work. Every skilled person to whom the Lord has given ability and who was willing to come and do the work, training, experience, and then the grace of God, the presence of God on our lives. You can apply that to every part of your life. Let me finish with a couple of statements. Discipleship at Bayside is all about training, experience, and grace. It's people in our church community who are willing, who say, I want to be a part of this. And you recognize what you know, and you recognize the abilities that you have. The thing, and your abilities are the things you love doing. And then you can develop in skill. It's been wonderful to watch over the years. So many people who are willing just step up and to grow and develop. We've got one of our guys who's now on full-time staff uh, in our media department, Sean Madler Edwards. Uh, when uh, Sean first joined the church with his mum and dad, Mark and Sandra, uh, he was four years old. I remember him back in the school hall, this little kid running around, little four-year-old. And uh, he joined our media team when he was in his teens and served very, very faithfully for many, many years. And uh, he's now done university and media studies and uh, qualified from university. And he's now on full-time staff here in Bayside, uh, working in media, the exchange. He does mo most of the editing on the exchange. And just a wonderful young man. That's why I love the children at Bayside Church. You know, to me, they're, they're not the church of the future. They're the church of now. And whenever I see our kids, you know, and they come in before the, during the service and they're standing here and they're worshipping. Well, some of them are worshipping. Some of them are pushing each other around. Some of them are sharing a joke. I'm just glad they're here. They're in the presence of God. And, you know, and I look at the kids and I go, wow, I wonder what's in you. I wonder what you're going to turn out to be. Some of the great men and women of the future wrapped up in those precious children, you know, maybe a future prime minister. Please, the future prime minister. <laughs> we don't know who's wrapped up in these things, 
But it's, it's, it's about discipleship. It's about training. It's about experience. And it's about grace. And if you're one of the unwilling, then you'll never experience those things. But if you are willing, you get into that and you grow and develop as a result. Your faith comes alive when you serve. And you get to meet people along the way. And, 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 and that's how you get friendship happening and, and you go deep together. And so that's why once a year we have a contribute weekend like this. And so Contribute Weekend, we're looking for those who are willing and those with skill, as well as those who would like to develop their skills. It's about using your time, your skills, and your resources in serving God and this Christian community and beyond. Let's pray together, shall we?